Alright everyone, I hope you've enjoyed the course so far. Looking at hitters through the lens of the big three is a fascinating way to approach the game of baseball. With that being said, I wanted to provide a little bit more context for how each element stacks up against each other. With the big three, we have to remember that each component is actually not created equally. Instead, what we've discovered is that there's a hierarchy describing their order of importance, and it looks like this. At the top, we have bat speed. Coming in second are bat to ball skills, and at the bottom is swing decisions. We like to think of bat speed as being the barrier to entry for high level production. Then as for what happens after that, our hitting analyst Noah Thurm said it best. A hitter's bat speed will set his ceiling and his floor. His smash factor and swing decisions will ultimately determine where he lives between the two. Couldn't have said it better myself. So now we're going to use WOBA, weighted on base average, to distinguish the relationship even further. In our models, a one point increase on the 20 to 80 scale results in the following. One point of bat speed equates to 2.5 points of WOBA, one point of bat to ball comes out to 1.8 points of WOBA. And one point of swing decisions is equal to one point of WOBA. Converting the big three into WOBA can really help us visualize the relationship between all three components. Our baseball operations department was able to figure this out using a multiple regression model. Remember how earlier in the course we talked about how a change in one area of the big three almost always affects the other to some extent? Well, our BB Ops department knows that too. So what they're able to do is isolate the effect of one while accounting for the others. When it comes down to it, we have to remember that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts with hitting. But bat speed still remains king. Okay, so here's a cool tweet from our hitting manager Tanner Stokey showing how improvements in different areas of the big three can result in tangible monetary value. Instead of just starting with an improvement on the 20 to 80 scale, Tanner starts with showing that one mile per hour bat speed can do and then going from there. When you do the math, adding just one mile per hour of average bat speed can get you around $6 million on the free agent market. Now if we transition from bat speed to bat to ball, we find that improving by one grade of smash factor has around 60% the value of improving your bat speed by one mile per hour. Run the math on that and you'll be making around 3.6 more million dollars in the open market. And lastly, Improving your swing decisions by one grade has around 77% of the value of improving your bat to ball by one grade. If we run the numbers here, we'll see that you'll be adding around 2.8 more million dollars to your value. And this is all assuming 600 plate appearances. A little bit more granular for sure, but very interesting to see the progression on how improving your talent level can literally make you more money. All right, for all of our statistically inclined viewers, I wanted to make sure that I included at least a couple of linear regressions. When using WOBA as our measure of performance, we're able to see the descriptive power of bat speed, bat to ball, and swing decisions. Okay, so I know what some of you are thinking. Shouldn't the strength of the correlations go in this order? Bat speed, smash factor, and then swing decisions. Why do swing decisions have a stronger correlation than bat to ball skills? Hey, good catch. Okay, time for some technical details. Bat speed remains the most important thing, but we see some discrepancies with smash factor and swing decisions. So these separate scatter plots are not controlling for the other ones, which is creating some potential selection bias, leading to potential correlations between the big three and the MLB sample, per Bergson's paradox. An MLB hitter with bad bat to ball skills has to have better bat speed, or else he wouldn't be able to play in the MLB. So this illustrates the importance of bat speed on its own. Essentially, bad bat to ball hitters have better bat speed on average, and thus doesn't reflect how bad they'd be if they were the same as other players, but just had worse bat to ball skills. Like we covered earlier, our multiple regression model controls for this by isolating the effect of one, while still being able to account for the others. This is definitely the best way for us to understand the prioritization of the big three. Regardless of all this, bat speed is still king. And lastly, I wanted to give a huge thank you to one of our data scientists, David Besky, for cooking up these visuals and explaining all of this to me. All right, so there you have it, the big three. If you're gonna remember one thing from this course, remember this. Bat speed sets your ceiling and your floor, and your bat to ball and swing decisions determine where you land on that scale. 
As trainers and coaches, understanding the ranking of the big three is useful because it gives us context for how we can allocate training time to yield the highest return on investment. I hope you enjoyed this course. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.